Hey there! Object-oriented programming, also known as OOP, whether you love it, hate it, or have never even heard of it, is prevalent throughout the software world today. Even though Luau doesn't have built-in support for object-oriented programming, there are some tricks we can pull to make it work. Hey there, this is Steven. Let's learn something new. We need to define object-oriented programming. The hint is within the paradigm's name itself, objects. Related data and behavior are all contained within similar objects. If you've done any Roblox game scripting, you've interacted with objects already. Most of Roblox's APIs are all object-oriented based. For instance, if you go to the documentation, you'll see a list of classes. Classes are essentially the definition of objects. You can see that a class has a list of properties and methods. Properties define the state of an object, while methods define the behavior of an object. Think of classes as the blueprint of an object. For example, the blueprint of a house. A house's blueprint defines everything relevant to creating a house. However, you can't walk through the front door of a blueprint. You first need to construct the house using the blueprint. This concept of constructing an object from a class is known as instantiation to create an instance of. Once an object is instantiated, you can access the properties of the object or perform actions on the object using its methods. So why care about object-oriented programming? Well, a couple of advantages could be, one, a tidy way to encapsulate state with its behavior, and two, it, it makes it easy to reuse code across our experience, or even multiple experiences. Regardless of your opinion of OOP, it's useful to become familiar with its concepts, as you will most likely find yourself interacting with other OOP code in some capacity. Okay, but how do you do it? As mentioned at the beginning, Luau does not have the mechanisms built in for classes. Therefore, we need to create our own mechanisms for classes. We can do this using tables and a bit of meditable magic. To learn this process, we are going to create our own simple projectile system. Let's say we want to shoot a paintball. We want to create a class that represents paintballs, and then that should let us instantiate paintball objects that we can fire in our desired direction. Let's start off by creating a paintball module script. Next, let's rename the default module to paintball. Now let's create a constructor function that allows us to create objects from our paintball class. We'll name this function new, as is the standard for most OOP environments, but please note that you could technically name this function whatever you want. This function will take the initial state of our paintball, let's say the color, C frame, and speed. All right, so we've essentially created a struct. We have the state of the object, but no behavior yet. In OOP, behavior is bound to the object. Instead of adding methods onto our object itself, we can add these methods to the paintball class instead, and then use meta tables to help our object point to those methods. But before we get to that, we first need to take a little tangent and learn about how the colon call syntax works. Let's create a table with some data, and let's attach a function to it. However, by default, this function has no way to access the data inside the table it's attached to. We could do this by hand by passing in the table manually as a parameter. However, there's a special syntax in the while that simplifies this. If we use the colon operator, our table is automatically injected as the first argument. This is equivalent to using dot notation and passing in the table. We call special syntax like this syntactic sugar. This also works on our method definition. Let's rewrite the function definition using a colon, which lets us drop the first argument. The wow automatically injects self as the first argument now. Okay, let's get back to adding a method to our paintball class. First, let's try to add a method to get the direction of our paintball. We can do this using the CFrames look vector property. If we create a new paintball object and try to call get direction, we'll see that it doesn't work. We get an error. Why? Well, notice how our method is attached to the paintball class, but our constructor creates a new table as the object. There's nothing currently linking the two together. They are entirely independent. We need a way for our object to see the paintball class and use its methods. To do this, we will use some meta table magic 
utilizing the index meta method to redirect access to our object up to our class. The easiest way to do this is to simply use our class as the actual meta table itself and add the index property to point to itself. Then we can assign it as a meta table to our paintball object in the constructor. Let's walk through how all of this works. Recall that the index meta method is triggered when we try to access something on the table that doesn't exist. So when we try to access the get direction function, which doesn't exist on our object, it redirects to the paintball class table because of that index meta method, which does have the function. However, because of the method colon syntax, the passed in table is still our object, not the class. Thus, the self variable in get direction still correctly points to the object, not the class. Walk through this a few times yourself until it makes sense. It's a critical piece of how we are building the OOP mechanism into Luau. For the sake of brevity, I've gone ahead and implemented a fire method onto our paintball class, which will fire a paintball projectile forward and paint whatever surface it hits. Now we have the very fundamentals of OOP implemented. We can build a class, construct it, and call methods on it. However, there's still more to learn. Currently, we've created a paintball class, but what if we also wanted an arrow class? Well, we could duplicate our paintball and modify it for the arrow. However, there is a better way within our OOP concepts. Let's abstract our class into a more generic class called projectile. Then our paintball and arrow classes can inherit the projectile. When we use inheritance in OOP, our new class inherits all of its parent class's state and behavior, but then allows us also to add things on as we desire. To implement inheritance into our current OOP mechanism, we only need to change a couple of things. First, let's create our projectile class, which will just be a copy and paste of our paintball class. We will also modify our projectile class to take a prefab object that acts as its physical projectile into the world. Going back to our paintball class, let's modify it to inherit from the projectile class. To do this, we will first require the projectile. Next, we will set the meta table of our paintball class to point to the projectile class. Set meta table returns the original table, so we can be more succinct by doing this operation when assigning index. Finally, in our constructor, we will create a projectile object, but reassign its meta table to our paintball class. This will create an inheritance chain. So when accessing our object, it will first look at itself for whatever it's looking for. And if it's not there, it will then look up to the paintball class and see if it's there. And if it fails to find it in the paintball class, it will go up again to the projectile class. Any properties or methods that exist on projectile are still callable, such as fire. We are also free to add our own methods and properties onto the paintball class too. In object-oriented programming lingo, we would say that paintball is a type of projectile, but a projectile is not necessarily a paintball, similar to how a square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is not necessarily a square. For our arrow, it will look quite similar to our paintball, but we want to override the fire method to make our arrow spin in the air. Note how we can still call the fire method from the projectile class we just have to access that method directly with dot notation and pass in self as the first argument. One of the powerful features of Luau is the static type system. Adding types to our OOP mechanism is a little tricky, but it's worth doing in the long run. Having typed classes and objects will make life easier when trying to use them in other code. Please note that all of the following information is optional. Back to our projectile class, let's create a new type that defines projectile. In order to get it to work nicely with meta tables, we need to use type of set meta table to get the type system to understand what we are trying to do. It might look a little messy, but thankfully this will look a lot cleaner in the newer type solver, which is still in beta as of this recording, so we're not going to look at that right now. Inside our meta table type, we need to cast the table to the shape of our object, which includes all of our properties. For the actual meta table part, we just pass in our class table. Our class table already contains our methods, so we don't need to redefine those here. Next, we need to change around our method definitions. We are going to go back to dot notation, but explicitly include and type our self variable. This will ensure that our method implementations are typed properly too. We will make the same changes in the paintball class as well. 
We've covered the basics of implementing OOP into Luau. So when should you use it? Well, there are times in game programming where objects might seem to be the most practical representation of your data. For instance, maybe you have a class that represents a vehicle in your game. Instantiating the vehicle might clone a vehicle model into the workspace and store it as a property. Then methods could be added to control the vehicle model, such as accelerate or steer methods. There are also times when you might not want to reach for OOP. For simple data sets, a plain table might be fine. That table could be passed around to functions as needed following a more functional programming approach. Anytime you're working with objects in this manner, be conscious if you are holding onto Roblox resources that need to be freed up when you're done with the object. For instance, if you have an event connection to a Roblox object, this connection might need to be disconnected explicitly when you're done with the object. For this reason, it's common to see a destroy method on classes, which helps with any necessary cleanup. For the most part, we can rely on the Luau garbage collector to do any necessary cleanup. And that is object-oriented programming with Luau. And as with any new tool, practice makes perfect. So go ahead and try it out. But remember, we always want to use the right tool for the job. Sometimes that might be object-oriented programming, and other times perhaps something else. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope to see you in the next one.